show you today how to upholster a very small but very pretty Victorian nursing chair, button back nursing chair. I've been doing upholstery for about 30 years now. Um, I used to have a big workshop and I moved overseas and I've come back and moved into a small house. So this is going to be an exercise as well on small space living and working, which is quite possible. You don't need a huge workshop to do it. So the first thing we have to do is to measure for the fabric. And it's easier to do it before you strip it down because you can take your pattern from what you have. So the first is to measure the chair. And let's go side to side first. And you need enough always for when you're on the bottom to be able to pull it and hold it tight on both sides. So if we go across the centre with the widest part, so I can feel I've got enough there, and enough here to get hold of and pull. There's the wood, you will tack it into the wood on the base. And we can't get into the back, but we know that we're going to upholster here. We know it's level. So the easiest thing quite often to do is just take by the center, measure how much you need. Um, go past your wood, go past your wood a couple of centimeters. You're better to be safe than sorry. And then all you have to do is double it. So give yourself again enough of a turn. Some fabrics fray, and you want to be able to always have enough. You don't have to go crazy, but just make sure you've got enough. And then we just go down and under again. Feel the back of the wood and add a couple of centimeters. Okay. Now this is a nice little chair, so we can do the back in one piece, which is easy. And see where the seam is. So you, again, you just take a couple of centimeters and you go around to the other side. And you will see so if you have a bigger armchair, there will be a seam. So you measure from the seam because the arms will likely be longer. So you need to do that separately. But that depends on each chair is a little bit different. It also depends on the width of your fabric. Inside this chair, there will be a metal frame. We never know what exactly what's in a chair until we get inside it. It could be horsehair, it could be some kind of white cotton or black cotton, wad, cotton wadding. It could be straw. I've had straw inside a chair before now. Um, again, a traditionally upholstered chair won't be foam but quite often foam is put back and it's much simpler. And you can do it if you want to use foam, but traditionally we don't. This chair is actually in separate pieces. The, the arms, even though it's so tiny, and I could get a whole width of fabric here, they're separate and that's because, whereas this pattern goes up here, the arms, we may want to pull the pattern this way. So it's worth following the design of the chair, always check, even on a tiny little chair, a bigger one, obviously they're going to be longer and the arms will most definitely be separate. So let's go down, take our, um, give yourself a nut, so we go one, and I cross it over like this and give a little bit of a loop, because that's going to give me, you need extra fabric and that gives you, it's one way of doing it, okay, and then we go down, Put your finger on the back so you're parallel. And feel down underneath and give yourself enough to yank it on, okay? Right, the measurement's done. And then we go across and I'm taking it from the arm. Okay, so this is folded under. And you need, again, it's, a, it's here. The, they've given sort of inch seam allowance here, which is good because you don't want things fraying and coming back and you need enough. So we go from the widest point here, 
again, allowance. And into all of these buttons. And again, over to the widest part and give yourself an allowance. Okay. So now we've just got the little arms. Again, find the, the widest part, which is your depth. Give yourself an allowance. And you've got to come down again. So we do the same thing, working out, taking the tape measure over and under. Okay. And I've got uh, a, only a couple of buttons here and they're barely pulled in. But um, I'm still going to give myself an allowance. And give yourself enough to get under there so it's not going to be pulled when you button, okay? And I'm going to give it, because I might try and make it a little bit more padded, although too padded, you won't get in it, it's so tiny. Okay. The only other thing, all you have to do, you've got to cover your buttons, and there's piping that goes all the way around. You can measure the piping if you want to. It will calculate how much cord you need to buy. But the, I will show you how to make the piping and we will just take that from the leftover pieces because you don't really see any pattern on it. It's really just decoration. Okay, um, and then the only other thing you need to do... <coughs> so you just need a piece of cloth for here. This is just an old piece of hessian. But I'll put some black barrier cloth. Okay. We're very lucky here, these springs are, are quite good. The customer is quite happy with how this springing is and it, it feels good. It's, it's just, a, it's not a chair that's gonna be used every day. So I don't have, I'm very lucky that I don't have to replace those. And I'm hoping that I won't have to replace what's inside here. It's horsehair, it's wadding. It's a big job if I do, and um, we're trying to keep costs down. One thing we need to talk about is pattern repeat, because when you order your fabric, you've got to make sure you have enough to get your pattern central. Um, if you go to a shop or whether you order it online, they will always give you um, a little list of the pattern depth, and the pattern width. So the pattern would be width-wise and length-wise. Plain fabric, absolutely no worry. If you've got a small pattern repeat, maybe 10 centimeters, which is quite often a small pattern repeat with a like a little lozenge, little lozenges. Um, Again, not too, not too difficult. You can move it quite easily across your width, um, but you do need to add on for the depth. So you've got to get, an, with this is a big pattern repeat, and the repeat is 36 centimeters. Um, tend to have small patterns on small chairs, but the customer couldn't find what she liked. Like this one, and it is a very much an all over design, and there are no rules. So if you see something you really like, try it. So we need to make sure that we've got um, the pattern central. So if you've got a, for example, on the front, which is the widest, or the back actually, I think here is the widest, make sure when you measure, you're taking a whole width. You might not need it, you might have some left, but just make sure, because we don't know exactly where the pattern starts. It's usually central on the fabric on the roll, on the width, um, but just in case, always allow yourself a width on a wide piece. You then, if you've got 36 centimetres, you should really add another 36 centimetres plus 36 centimetres um, if you want it central because, you know, it, it, it may be, you may be lucky, it'll come on the roll and that's just exactly where you want it, but it might not be. There might be half a bit at the top and then you've got to go right down again to get um, this, to centralise the pattern where you want it. So if you're, whatever your pattern is, you need always to add the pattern repeats because you, it's difficult, it's difficult to know where it's going to come. 
So you want a pattern repeat for the seat, one for the back, uh, one for the front and the arms. You usually get two arms from a width, inside or outside, but again, you're gonna have to measure it, work it out, but just be careful with your widths and, and your depths of pattern repeat. And you know, if you're not used to it, go to a shop that sells fabric and have a look at their rolls, get some examples, look at your curtains, you know, and you'll, you'll kind of get to understand it a little bit more. The first thing we're gonna do is take off the base cover. Um, <clears throat> 30 years ago when I started, there were no mobile phones, there was, there was no quick instant photos to look back at. Take photos, because then you will, if, you know, if you're new to it, you'll know how to put it back. This has all been nailed on, um, traditional upholstery, but it bashes the wood. If a customer, if you want traditional upholstery, you use nails, but you might get into a chair, find it's been re-upholstered three times, and there's very little wood to actually get another nail in, and it's becoming really um, brittle and crumbly, the wood. Sometimes we have to pack it with uh, wood filler. Or there's an alternative. Um, you can use staples. A, a really traditional upholstery would say, whoa, no, don't use the staples, and I'm very much for that, but it is so much kinder to the wood, and every time you bang in a nail, you're bashing that wood. I'm going to take this off now, and I'm bashing at the nails, but everything, that every time you hit, is a bash on the wood. Okay, so let's take a look at some tools that we need for ripping down. A mallet. some pliers, and two ripping chisels. This one is the best for tacks, but sometimes you just need to get into an awkward corner and this one comes in very useful too. Okay, so let's get started. You just use your ripping chisel, tack with a mallet, and if you're lucky, it comes out. Again, be gentle because you're bashing it against the wood. You know, it's very, very tempting to just rip anything out really quickly, but you've still got to get those tacks out. And it's easier to get under the fabric, I find. You get a stubborn one like this. Go in at a different angle. But be careful. Be careful. When you get to the leg, you've got this beautiful piece of wood which I'm going to polish anyway, but you really want to be very, very gentle, careful, that you don't cut into it or damage the wood. It, on the, in this case, if you can get on top of the fabric and get that nail, all well and good, but if not, go inside, but make sure you're really flat, you're not getting those sharp ends into the wood. Okay, so that's all untacked very easily. There were some tacks in the legs. And in fact, in this one, they obviously couldn't get it out, so they left it in, I've got it out. <laughs> the old tack. So I can tell from that that this isn't the first time it's been re-upholstered. The first thing that I would do is put this straight in a back bag and close the back. However, if you want to keep it, to um, check out the pattern. You can have a good look at the back, see how it's done. Just um, fold it up. Again, you put it in a bag, but you, it, it's just there. Keep it until you've finished, in case you want to take it out and have a look. Um, these were these were folded neatly, cut into with the V, which we will look at later, around the leg. And these are just, they have several little cuts so they've been able to fold it just around there and there were no tacks in the legs that so was just pulled down. Okay, and I've got nails going everywhere. Um, I use this cloth. Um, I bought this old table, five pounds. Um, 
but actually you, you get all the dirt and the grime coming on this and then you can just fold it up and get it in your bag or chuck it wherever you're going to chuck it because that makes life a little bit easier. Okay, okay so let's take a little bit of a closer look at the webbing here and how the springs are tied in. This, I'm not going to replace this unless I get inside it and really feel I need to um, because it's still quite firm and the customer is quite happy with how it's sprung. It might be different when I get to the top layer, but let's see. Anyway, you can see here how the springs are tied in four places, okay, from the, from the other side. So the chair would be on its feet and you would work from inside the chair. These webbings would be pulled tightly, tighter than they are now. They've, they have lost some of their firmness with wear but they're really they're not perishing so i'm quite happy with that um and then this brings first of all tied at the bottom and if you look at this cloth you can see how it's come the wood ends here and the fabric comes over so he's got a good or she has a good um bit to pull on however this will also have been cut and if we look here almost looks like the person who upholstered this didn't give themselves enough but on this bit um on the rest of it they will have pulled it and also trimmed it so the next thing is to start to take off the top cover and you will have a look you'll be able to see what which bit comes off first and the bit that comes off first will be the piece that is put on last um, so the back here, obviously, I'm going to get cracking on this. Okay. So now we can get a little bit of a look at the wood. There's not too many holes in it. And it is incredibly hard. So I think it will be possible to nail into that quite nicely. Sometimes, honestly, it's been upholstered three or four times and you can barely see wood for holes, but this is good, this is good. So a few things I want to show you. Um, I can see from this hole here, these holes, that this is the second time it's had springing in it. So that should be fine. Um, I can also tell from here that this has been upholstered, I think, twice. I think this is its second cover. But from the from the um, way it had perished on the front, it's obviously been on here quite a long time. Uh, as I said, with hammering, bashing nails into wood, if we look down here, you can see, I'm not quite sure what happened here, why that should have split, but it has, and somebody's actually nailed it back on. So this is the reason why I like to use staples because they're so much kinder to bashing these poor old bits of wood about. <laughs> it's quite quite an old chap. The other thing I wanted to show you was they have these little um, pins here. They're, li they're little tiny upholstery nails, decorative nails, so you can get them in different colours just to hold it in place on the leg. So be really, really careful getting those out as well. Try your very best not to split any wood more than it has been already. And one more thing I wanted to show you. Look how much dirt has come out of this already. So really be ready with your bags. And this is actually where your mask could come in very useful. I will take the hoover inside the chair. Uh, before I stand it up. So now I've released everything that's been uh, nailed on underneath very very carefully around the legs here and at the backs. Be really really gentle with those um, and now we will continue with the back. I'm going to turn it up the other way. Ooh. And there are a lot of nails and must dirt on the table and at this point you can have a clean up. 
So at this point now we need to take off the side seam but if you can see here it's been stitched so now all we need is the scissors. So we can just snip that as we go easily all the way around. More rubbish falling on the table. Very old toys. Always interesting to see how somebody else has upholstered a chair. And you know, especially if it's your first time you've done it, a really good way to see um, what you're going to need to do to put it back together. Now we've got um, the back exposed and you can see the buttoning, they've, they've put a line down the back here, which is a good idea to keep things level. You can put a line here, you can put lines where you like, draw lines where you like. Um, and then you can evenly space your buttons. And we tend to work from the back to give us a good pattern and then go through to the front, but we'll work on, do that later. And you can see these spines now here um, that run up here, just metal, that's all it is, just these metal spines and round here. And then there's one over here giving you the shape of the chair. So if we look at the back now, I don't know if you can, if you can see the piping is just stitched onto here. So they've actually made a pattern and stitched on their piping and then they put it against here. So this is a good one to keep because you can just make your own pattern from this. You can see exactly how it's gone. Um, obviously this needs to be longer. You can see where it's trimmed. Keep a good bit on the bottom there, make that much longer. Centralize your pattern and then you can just fix it. So the next thing we need to take off is the seat. We've got the front bit off because that came when I was the chair was upside down. And now you can see how they stitched it on here. That's not enough fabric for me. They've literally just caught the wood on here. So you, you have two options. You finish it like this, literally on that tiny piece of wood, but that's going to be really split if everybody tacks on there, on that little edge. Um, or you take it under, and then you bring your back over it. But um, we'll play with that as we go along. So now all I need to do is untack this bit of seat and then we can take that off. Um, what I do want to show you though is on oh, this piece the, the padding is over the front. So I'm going to have to undo a little bit of this and pull it back to get the front on. And can you see this chamfered edge here? Now the reason that they have that is that they can nail into here so there's not layers and layers of bulky fabric coming around here because when you get your back cover on you want a nice neat line here. So everything has been nailed to this chamfer. Um, and I'm just going to continue taking this off and <laughs> play it by ear a little bit in the hopes that I can save the, the lining, the padding. The person who upholstered this chair would have had a lot more fabric to pull over that edge to give it, you've got to keep it tight. Um, so he's nailed that and cut it. Although you can see from the nail holes, the first um, covering would have come down and been nailed in here. So here's the chair, stripped of its seat. And I just want to show you the wadding here. And this is really nice. It has a lovely shape still. I really am going to try my hardest not to disturb that. So we've got the black cotton wadding here. There's a layer of horsehair here, which is sat on the stitched pad. The stitched pad is also full of horsehair. So what you do um, is put a layer of hessian over and you set, uh, tack it to the chamfered edge. 
so it's not coming down we avoid any bulk on this bit so keep it on that chamfered edge and then this has he's got three rows of stitching here you have a very long needle which goes right through into the middle of the chair tie the knot pull it back and you go all the way around doing that three times starting at the bottom second layer and then at the top you make sure you have this curve and all the time you're pulling horse hair pulling it into this to make this really lovely flat edge okay so the now what we have to do is take off the arm and the front and I've managed to just pull this little bit back I'm really hoping I don't have to go into any more of that but if I do I, I can wad it um, so it's just this and if you can see here it's actually all stitched on because there's no wood there's nothing there's just this metal bars like like these and we can't obviously stitch to those so he, it's been lashed if you like to the um, the hessian and the wadding inside and it's a special kind of knotted lashing that that keeps it in place and the person who's upholstered this has has given it no they haven't they've got actually <laughs> oh that's interesting they've actually completely um upholstered over the the last fabric so i'm just continuing to snip round i'm not going to take off the bottom layer yet oh it's all very I think he has done this twice actually because it's it's caught in different places. It's always fascinating to get into a chair to s see a, a different upholsterer's technique. And this is going back when upholstery was traditional. Perhaps there wasn't any foam back then. Look at this. As I said, it's always a surprise. Um, there's a saying that the stuffing in a chair is everything from the upholsterer's floor. <laughs> won't be from mine this is I'm working in my kitchen um, if you're working at home you're going to get dust so I'm working in my kitchen because there's probably less in here to clean up afterwards no food out everything away I've given this a clean up an interim clean up there's still muck coming out and there will continue to be and swept the floor uh, be aware tacks tend to fly all over the place but um, oh just keep going what's next so I've I've um, taken off the front and cut all the stitching and you can see here gives you a good idea of how much um, turn there is he's let he's left a good turn on that and there's the little arm you can see how much they've overlapped and and cut into it here I don't know if you can see that little V shape to accommodate the bend there'll be lots of cutting and folding and on a chair like this but um, that gives you an idea of how much extra you need the next thing we need to do to release the front is to cut through the buttons we have no choice but to do that because um, we need to put new ones in um, these bits of uh, cloth here are to hold the string you pull it through put the cloth there tie it um, and that's obviously you need something to stop the string just going back. So that's why those are there. But we will look at that again later. So we just try to hold it very tight get into here. And hopefully. There we go. We can release. Actually, at this point, um, you could actually take some measurements if you wanted to, if you feel more confident. Um, so then you can replicate where the buttons will go on your finished piece. Okay, so the front cover is off and I just want to show you in here because this is quite interesting. Um, this, I think, I don't know how old it is possibly the original Victorian covering. It's certainly very old and you can see that because of how it's really perished. Yeah, inside here, 
you can see uh, white felt wadding and the hair just just been laid on um, I don't want to dig into it too deeply but um, underneath this there should be hessian which is stitched on I like just like the seat with the hessian inside it with the hair inside the hessian but I'm not even sure if that I think that's why that felt so loose just because it, it hasn't got anything covering the hair other than the wadding anyway the edge roll is really the most important and they have packed this out with hair and then put some felt over it and just buttoned it really really simply the as I said before the metal bars would you would expect them to be bound so you could stitch to them they haven't been so this chair has been put together quickly and easily goodness knows whether it was a cheap chair initially it's beautiful if it was so I don't want to remove that <clears throat> and it's it's you know it stayed where it has for this length of time it will it will stay there longer but I'm going to pack it out more and firm up the back if that is at all possible somewhere or other without losing the the hair we'll try it anyway because this is history you know and we don't want to destroy history